want to welcome you to this Monday Thursday service. We're so glad that you have joined us today and hope that you come again. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered, gathered with his disciples around the table and instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. And after supper, he washed his disciples' feet, an act of servanthood, and he instructed them to do likewise to one another. Help us to have humble and willing hearts to follow Jesus in the way of love and service to others. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. first reading today is a reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It will be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided into proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you, when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The second reading is a reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also 
after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share of me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, for he is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, 
Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God had been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of Christ. In the name of the God of justice, peace, and the life abundant. It was supposed to be just another Passover meal, but then things started turning around, changing the order, changing the words, changing the meaning. Throughout his brief ministry, Jesus was always doing that kind of thing, changing the usual order of things. Think about the woman at the well. No Jewish man ever talked to Samaritans, much less female ones. And no one ever actually healed someone born blind, especially on the Sabbath. No one, that is, but Jesus. He put outrageous ideas out there like, love your neighbor as yourself. He changed the meaning of life for the disciples and the lives of so many others. But then, isn't life all about change? So just as the lives of the 12 disciples at that Passover meal had been stirred up and changed and turned around by Jesus, so have the lives of so many people since then. Sometimes those changes are dramatic and huge. Sometimes they're more ordinary. And sometimes there are events where it's hard to see how Jesus had anything at all to do with it. For the past year, all of us have been living in a strange and unusual ways due to this worldwide pandemic. It's been unlike anything any of us have ever known. We've faced fear, anger, and anxiety, and isolation. Over 500,000 people here in the United States alone, that's half a million, have died due to COVID-19. So what happened to those lives that we used to live? When we could shake hands, we could hug our loved ones, we could go to work or school each day and be with our friends. Now we've had to quarantine ourselves. We can no longer travel. We became very weary. We've become very tired of wearing masks and bumping elbows. In addition to all that illness, there's been a huge increase in shootings, violence, hate crimes, burning city streets and rioting protests. So where is Jesus in all that? Sometimes God has, to me, seemed kind of distant during our Zoom worships. 
But as I see it, God is and was and has been there by our sides in the middle of all of this, helping us to come to terms with this new kind of lives that we are having to lead, helping us to, to grieve, helping us to understand what is not even understandable, offering peace and solace to everyone. Jesus does not cause anyone to get sick or die, but God is there to help us work through the misery of it. God's unchanging changelessness is what helps us through those changes and chances of our lives. At that Passover meal, Jesus gave a new commandment to his disciples. This bread, he said, represents my body. This cup is a new covenant. Eat it and drink it and remember me. The disciples must have been amazed when he said this, and I imagine that dead silence fell over the whole table. And then they must have started to realize just a little bit that something huge was going on. And then Jesus was even more amazing. He got up, took off his robe, tied a towel around his waist, and proceeded to wash the feet of his disciples. Here was the master doing the work of the servant. Now this group had been here for about three years, and Jesus knew each of them very well. As he took each dusty, calloused foot in his hands and gently washed the day's dust and dirt off of it, he surely thought of the person who belonged to that foot, who he was, what the future might hold for him, and, and what he had given up to be in that room that night. When he came to Judas' feet, Jesus never missed a beat. He knew that this was his betrayer, but he lovingly picked up those feet in his hands and washed them and dried them, and in doing so, forgave the man. And that's what I think Jesus is trying to teach us. Jesus forgave Judas and in doing so set an example for his disciples so that they could forgive people, especially the people who were going to put Jesus to death the next day. And this example stands for each of us so that we too can forgive the hurts, the angst, the horrors that have come into our lives. For that to happen, we need to embrace the changes, to accept the stirrings up, to work harder to work harder at improving conditions that foster tragedy, especially for people of color, for all people who are not just plain white. And in spite of this upheaval, I want to point out that some very good things have been happening every day. Every day I read about people who have gone out of their way to make life better for someone else, bringing food, providing housing, giving money. For the first time since it began, our coat shed out there has been totally full this year. Random acts of kindness and love have exploded during this year. I believe we are learning to forgive each other, forgive those who don't agree with us, forgive ourselves as we try to come to terms with our own self-centered racist thoughts. We've become good at taking care of each other, even if it has to be virtually. And while doing all these good things, we know that God has been there for us. Even in the midst of all these changes, as we put our own pain and fear aside so that Jesus can forgive others, like Jesus, we can forgive others and ourselves as we symbolically and lovingly wash each other's dirty feet. And tonight, rather than washing feet, I'm asking you to take hold of the hand of someone next to you who is dear to you. If there's not someone next to you, bring up in your mind images of people 
who have influenced your life. Picture those whom you love and those you find hard to love and imagine yourself washing their feet. In doing that, our lives here tonight can be changed and reordered and renewed by Jesus. As Jesus gets ready to go to his death tomorrow, let us never forget how the world has changed since that Passover meal sung 2,000 plus years ago. This is Monday Thursday. It was supposed to be just another Passover meal, but things started changing. The Paschal mystery has begun. Amen. prayers of the people. On this holy day, we come together as the body of Christ and at the table, may we come to love and serve one another. On this holy day, then, let us pray for the church and the world, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the whole church of God, that it may grow in unity and servanthood, God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For the city of Minneapolis and our entire nation, as we reckon with racial, racial injustice in our land, which is spotlighted in the trial of Derek Chauvin, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation, that in these holy days we may grow in love for one another and for all people, God in your mercy, hear our prayer for the leaders and peoples of the world, that reconciliation and justice may overcome conflict and oppression. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in pain, for the lonely and the forgotten, for the hungry in body and in spirit, that they may know the abundance of God's love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died, and for all the saints and martyrs, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people. Amen. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In union, O Lord, with faithful Eucharistic people throughout the world, we offer you our thanks and praise. We present to you our souls and bodies, earnestly desiring that we may always be united with you. You promise, O Christ, to be present with us in the sacrament of your body and blood. So with confidence, we claim your presence among us during this Eucharistic fast. We trust you are always with us. Unite us with you and one another. May your healing grace abound and let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now in the spirit of Christ, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in praying the closing prayer. Holy God, your Son, Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and humbled himself in obedience to the point of death, even death on the cross. May we faithfully walk with him through his passion and give us courage to take up our cross and follow him in the way of love. All this we ask through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's blessing be with you. May Christ's love be be with you. May the Spirit's outpouring be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.